Why hello there, I just listened to the new Richard Dawson album, 2020. Now let me set the stage for you. My family and I were going camping over the weekend, and I thought to myself, I'm going to be out in the wilderness, I should download some music so that I have something to listen to. I went over to youtube.com slash the needle drop and I just clicked on the first video that I saw. I didn't even watch the video, but I looked in the description and saw that he gave it an 8 out of 10, and I was like, nice, I downloaded the album. Cut to 24 hours later, cold, wet, malnutrition, only sustaining off of the continental breakfast I had had at the hotel that morning. I was up 9,000 elevation in the great wild of the Sierra Mountains. As I prepare to ascend the mountaintop, or at least a, a two mile hike up some hill, I thought, hey, this would be a great time to listen to some of the music that I downloaded, you know, while I'm deprived of oxygen. 2020 by Richard Dawson is a wonderful album. The entire album is held together by a canvas woven out of English folk music. And painted upon that canvas are some of the more modern sounds, with genres ranging from rock to electronic, even a bit of metal. These reimagined folky melodies help give structure to the satirical, beautifully weird, and often hilarious lyrics about some of the most mundane aspects of life. Dawson's accent and use of slang are just the signature at the bottom of the painting, and all of these elements combine to create a great album where each song is a bit of a story, a bit of a slice of life of an interesting character. I believe this album was a call by my ancestors to bring this Yankee boy back to the home island. The first track, Civil Servant, starts out with loud, aggressive, distorted guitars and Again, climbing that mountain not knowing what this album is about or knowing the artist. Originally, I thought, oh shit, okay, this is like a metal album. But then there's a change up to a more subtle, plucky guitar that's still distorted, but the tune is much more uh, folksy, much more meadow frolicky. And of course, you pick up immediately on the English accent. It's not that a proper here's a little bit of tea is more North Shore landing. That's not it. <laughs> Listen to it for yourself. It's a great accompaniment to the folk style music. I think some people might be off put by him choosing to sing up into these loud high notes. But again, I think it's wonderful. Dawson also uses a lot of vocal stacking to get himself to these high notes or to make them more epic. I could see some thinking that he sounds a bit amateurish, but it's okay, they're wrong. Civil Servant is an amazing opener, and that leads into the second track, The Queen's Head. This is a much more clean or acoustic folksy song combined with a powerful chorus, and the choruses in nearly all of these songs are amazing. The songs average about six minutes each, but the tracks are routinely broken up by solos, some bridges, interesting noises, change up in chorus lyrics. Nearly all of these additions flow perfectly with the songs, and all of these new sounds kept me engaged while listening, and with the addicting choruses, time just flies listening to this album. Next track is Two Halves, which is a more alternative rock vibe with epic ranging vocals, and it's probably got one of the best choruses on the album, an amazing melody, great backing guitar, an orgasmic bass line. Okay, maybe that's a bit too far. And by this song, I started listening to the lyrics and I was like, wait a second, what is this about? Two Halves is about a kid's peewee soccer game. Civil Servant is about working at a government call center and then eventually building up the courage to call in sick one day. I don't want to go to work this morning, I just want to lie here and play the new Call of Duty. I finally gathered the courage to ring in sick. The Queen's Head is about a town's river flooding and the community, including the vape shop guy and the butcher, having to begrudgingly come together to save the pub. These songs are unapologetically about some of the most mundane tragedies of day-to-day -day life. This ain't that folk music that's about being in love or being in a beautiful place. Now this album is about working, having to deal with other people, or, or whatever weird situation Dawson chooses to frame a song around. It might just be my unworldly Americanness, but with each song, even though the concepts and the stories change quite a bit, I still feel like there's that English slice of life flavor that brings all of the songs together to still make a really cohesive album. Throughout the album, the lyrics are sort of the British presentation you have to give, the sort of repressed response to life that is socially acceptable 
to show to other people. While the song's instruments and the vocal performance are the inner emotions just screaming out for help. Whether that's just a British stereotype or not, it's something that I can relate to and it's uh, it's fucking hilarious. There are some standout lyrics in two halves like, you're not Lionel Messi, just pass the bloody ball. And at the end of the song, he's driving home from the game with his dad and his dad asks him, hey, do you want to pick up Chinese or fish and chips? The lyrics are hilarious, but they don't take away at all from the music. If anything, his melodies are strong enough that he can change out words to support his story more, and they still make the song sound amazing. The next song, Jogging, is just about finding a little bit of happiness now that he started jogging. I like how he incorporates some electronic and hard rock into this song, and... It feels like it's meant to be epic, but of course the subject matter is so mundane that it's supposed to be a bit like, I'm, I'm going jogging. I think there are some interesting concepts, it just doesn't pan out quite as well as the previous songs. Heart Emoji brings back the excellence. It's got a toe-tapping guitar, sassy drums, and theatrical performance and sound effects. It's about the main character discovering his wife has been cheating on him, and he recollects them first meeting, and then he goes into the kitchen to get a knife to stab her, when he accidentally steps on a slug to his horror. I would explain more about the concept of the song, but it's a bit weird and you kind of just have to listen to it yourself. Next up is Black Triangle, which is about a guy who's obsessed with UFOs and 20 years later, kind of everyone else has moved on, but his family left him because he's so obsessed. The song starts with some hard rock and synth, kind of like the intro, I don't know, to like an 80s movie or something. And then it switches to a more folky, almost shanty tempo, like in some pirate movie, combined even with maybe some Western sounds. The song's another example of how many different sounds and subject matters he can talk about in this album, but they all just seem to work really well together. Fulfillment Center has a repetitive and piercing distorted guitar melody accompanied by undecipherable robot chants, uh, scratchy guitar solos, and just a defeated vocal performance. These parts of the song are broken up by sorry, happy moments of pleasant guitar and singing. The song is stressful and soul-crushing, which is as intended given that the song is about some bloke that works at a fulfillment center. I'd be lying if I'd say I'm adding it to my Sing Along in the Car playlist. It's not so much a song, but a great experience, and within the album, I think it's a really great addition. He made this the longest track on the album at 10 minutes on purpose. It's not supposed to be a pleasant experience. For an entire seven line verse, he just lists off some catalog items he's trying to sell. It's brilliant. Fresher's Ball is a sweet and quiet acoustic ballad about a father dropping off his daughter to university. And the home feels empty without her. He goes into the garden and he sees a hedgehog drinking from the pond and <laughs> I just find it hilarious. The hedgehog is like some sort of mythical animal omen that gives the main character a bit of comfort, as it does myself when I listen to the song. Dead Dog in the Alleyway is a great closer for the album. It's about being homeless. It's got a dark, distorted guitar for most of the tracks, but it lifts up into the chorus, which is a more happy, uh, epic, folksy, pop, electronic sound. Just like climbing a mountain, or even just a two mile hike, life has no meaning. You have to create your own meaning with life. You have to find your own purpose. By presenting the mundane in such epic, important, and beautiful ways, combining folk melodies with all sort of different genres to create unique and interesting sounds, having an album be so goddamn funny, but just as good musically as well, this was a mind-blowing experience for me. I'd never heard an album like this before. This album's not for everyone. In fact, I think it was made for me. It's a bit weird. My type of weird, though. It's got me questioning whether or not I should listen to more folk music, or maybe I should go camping more, or move to England. I'm giving this album Climb a Fucking Mountain out of 10. You know, interpret that score how you want, just know that it's a pretty damn high score. Please give this album a listen. Everyone else who I've showed this album to uh, hasn't really liked it. Absolute basic bitches, methinks. But anyways, thank you all for watching. See you next time.